Imagine a river, vast and powerful, flowing uphill. Not naturally, of course, but by the hand of humankind. This is the reality of China's South North Water Transfer Project, a $62 billion endeavor so ambitious it boggles the mind. This is a story of engineering prowess, of a nation wrestling with its natural resources, and of the delicate balance between progress and consequence. China, for all its might, faces a fundamental challenge. Water scarcity in its north, abundance in its south. This geographic disparity has spurred one of the most audacious infrastructure projects ever conceived. Water, the lifeblood of civilization, is being moved on a scale never before seen. It's a story that speaks to our ingenuity but also forces us to confront the potential costs of our endeavors. To understand the why behind this colossal project, we must first understand the where. Picture a map of China. The south, lush and green, is fed by mighty rivers like the Yangtze. This region is China's breadbasket, a land of plentiful rainfall. Now shift your gaze north. Here the landscape changes. The North China Plain, home to Beijing and other major cities, is comparatively arid. The Yellow River, though iconic, struggles to quench the thirst of this densely populated region. The disparity is stark. The North holds 20% of China's water, yet supports over 40% of its population and farmland. This imbalance, exacerbated by population growth and industrialization, is the driving force behind the South-North Water Transfer Project. It's a story of resource management on a grand scale, a nation attempting to reshape its destiny one drop of water at a time. The South-North Water Transfer Project is not just one canal, but an intricate network of three major routes, each with its own unique challenges and solutions. These routes are known as the Eastern, Central, and Western routes, each playing a crucial role in the grand scheme of water redistribution. Each route tackles a different geographic challenge, showcasing the ingenuity and determination of Chinese engineers who have worked tirelessly to bring this vision to life. The Eastern Route, completed in 2013, is a marvel of engineering that utilizes existing canals and rivers to transport water. It pumps water northward, like pushing a ball uphill, feeding the thirsty cities of Shandong Province and ensuring a stable water supply for millions of residents. The Central Route, operational since 2014, is perhaps the most impressive of all. It slices through the heart of China, drawing water from the Yangtze's tributaries and carrying it uphill to Beijing, a feat that required overcoming numerous engineering challenges. Imagine the engineering required to lift billions of cubic meters of water over such vast distances. The scale and complexity of this project are truly mind-boggling. The western route, still under construction, is the most ambitious and challenging of the three. It aims to divert water from the Tibetan Plateau, navigating treacherous mountainous terrain and overcoming extreme environmental conditions. When complete, this interconnected network will form a massive water grid, redistributing water resources across thousands of kilometers, ensuring that even the most arid regions of China have access to vital water supplies. The impact of this project on local communities cannot be overstated. Farmers will have reliable water for irrigation, urban areas will see a reduction in water scarcity, and overall the quality of life for millions of people will improve. Historically, China has faced significant water scarcity issues, with dry riverbeds and drought-affected areas being a common sight. This project aims to change that narrative. Engineers and scientists are employing advanced technology and innovative solutions to ensure the success of the South-North Water Transfer Project, making it a model for large-scale water management worldwide. The sheer scale and interconnectedness of this project are a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of solutions to some of the world's most pressing challenges. As the water grid continues to expand and evolve, it stands as a beacon of hope and a symbol of what can be achieved through collaboration, innovation, and determination. Beyond the dams and canals, there's a human cost to moving a river. This cost is often hidden behind the grandeur of engineering feats and the promise of progress. While the engineering marvels are undeniable, the project's impact goes beyond concrete and steel. These structures, though impressive, cast long shadows over the lives of those who live in their vicinity. The South-North water transfer is a story of people, those displaced by its construction and those whose lives are forever altered by its presence. It's a tale of disruption and adaptation, of communities torn apart and reformed in new, unfamiliar places. The construction of canals and reservoirs has resulted in the relocation of hundreds of thousands of people, uprooting them from their homes and heritage. These are not just numbers, they are individuals with histories, cultures, and deep connections to their land. 
Forcing them to leave ancestral homes and adapt to new lives is a monumental challenge. The emotional and psychological toll is immense as people say goodbye to the places where they have lived for generations. Imagine the emotional toll of leaving behind everything familiar, the memories, the sense of belonging, the community bonds, all left behind in the name of progress. This displacement raises questions about equitable development and the true cost of such ambitious projects. Are the benefits worth the sacrifices made by these communities? Can progress be truly called progress if it leaves so many behind? Furthermore, the transfer of water has the potential to disrupt the livelihoods of millions more who depend on agriculture and fishing along the affected rivers. These rivers are lifelines, providing sustenance and economic stability to countless families. Addressing these social and economic impacts is crucial for the project's long-term sustainability and social acceptance. Without considering the human element, such projects risk creating more problems than they solve. The voices of those affected must be heard, and their needs must be met to ensure a just and equitable outcome for all involved. Ecological Domino's Unintended Consequences on Nature's Balance The intricate web of life that exists within our natural world is a marvel of interconnected systems. Each element, from the smallest microorganism to the largest mammal, plays a crucial role in maintaining the equilibrium of our ecosystems. Moving such enormous volumes of water inevitably impacts the environment. These massive engineering projects, while designed to solve human problems, often overlook the subtle yet significant ways they alter the natural world. The redirection of water can lead to unforeseen changes in local climates, soil composition, and even the behavior of wildlife. We are, after all, tinkering with the delicate balance of nature. When we intervene in these systems, we must do so with a deep understanding of the potential ripple effects. The soil that nurtures our crops, the water that sustains our communities, and the air we breathe are all part of a finely tuned system that has evolved over millennia. The South North Water Transfer Project raises concerns about its ecological footprint, reminding us that every action has a reaction. This ambitious project aims to address water scarcity in northern regions by diverting water from the south, but it also poses significant risks to the ecosystems it traverses. The construction and operation of such infrastructure can lead to habitat destruction, changes in water temperature, and altered flow patterns. The construction of dams and canals disrupts natural water flow, impacting fish migration patterns and aquatic ecosystems. Fish that have relied on specific migratory routes for generations find their paths blocked, leading to declines in population and genetic diversity. These disruptions can have cascading effects on the entire food web, affecting not just fish but also the birds, mammals, and other species that depend on them. Imagine the disruption to a fish's life cycle, its ancient migratory paths blocked by concrete barriers. These barriers not only prevent fish from reaching their spawning grounds, but also fragment habitats, making it difficult for populations to recover. The loss of these migratory routes can lead to the decline of species that are already vulnerable due to overfishing, pollution, and climate change. Furthermore, the transfer of water from south to north could lead to changes in water quality and salinity levels, impacting both aquatic life and human use. The introduction of water with different chemical compositions can alter the delicate balance of nutrients and minerals in the receiving ecosystems. This can lead to algal blooms, oxygen depletion, and the decline of native species that are not adapted to the new conditions. The project also raises concerns about the potential spread of invasive species and diseases. When water is moved from one region to another, it can carry with it organisms that are not native to the new environment. These invasive species can outcompete local flora and fauna, leading to a loss of biodiversity and the disruption of ecosystem services. As water flows from one ecosystem to another, it can carry with it unwanted hitchhikers, disrupting local ecological balances. These invasive species can establish themselves quickly, often with devastating effects on native populations. They can alter habitat structures, compete for resources, and introduce new diseases to which local species have no immunity. Monitoring and mitigating these ecological risks is crucial for the long-term health of both the North and South. Scientists and policymakers must work together to develop strategies that minimize the negative impacts of such projects. This includes continuous monitoring of water quality, the implementation of measures to prevent the spread of invasive species, and the restoration of habitats affected by construction. Only through a comprehensive and adaptive approach can we hope to balance the needs of human development with the preservation of our natural world.